The next thing is this. We have to be grateful for our weakness. Why? Grateful? Someone look up 2 Corinthians 12, verse 8 and 9. 2 Corinthians 12, 8 and 9. And then someone look up, keep your finger there, I'm going to have you read uh, verse 10 a little bit later. Someone want to read 1 Corinthians 12, 8 and 9. Very familiar scripture. 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, brother. 2 Corinthians, you're right. For this thing I besought the Lord Christ, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Here's Paul. We're not going to talk about what this infirmity is, but this thorn of the flesh that he prays for and God doesn't deliver him from it. And so as he's praying, he says that, you know, that he's literally begged God, God deliver me from this. But God replies back to him and he says, wait a second, Paul, my grace is sufficient for this need. And then he begins to talk to Paul. And Paul begins to make a realization. He said, wait a second. I realize that my experience is deeper in Christ because of this infirmity, this thorn in the flesh that I have. Be grateful for it. Amen. When you are at the face of adversity and you realize that you are weak, Amen. I want you to reframe tonight. Instead of saying, wait a second, I am overwhelmed. Wait a second, why is God allowing me to get here? And once again, as I said earlier this evening, we try to bring this debate before God. We try to vindicate ourselves. And we, and we bring God to court. And we plead our case before Him. God knows what He's doing. And instead, let's reframe and say, God, thank you for this opportunity for me to see you move in the middle of my weakness. Listen, I know that none of us like having those things in the flesh, whatever they may be, and we all have them. But it's an opportunity to grow and deepen our experience. I haven't always liked my job. I haven't always liked different things about my life. But I realized that God allowed me to do things in my life because it took me deeper. I look back at my life, yeah, and there were many times as I look back that I wish I could change things for the day. But I am weak. I cannot. But I must realize it is an opportunity for the power of God to move in my life and for it to take me to a deeper experience. God wants to take us to a deeper experience. Be grateful for what happens. Be grateful for your weakness. It guarantees God's help. Brother Justin already read it this evening. God said that He was with Paul and that His grace was sufficient. Well, just to read on down verse number uh, 10 of the same chapter of 2 Corinthians 12 that you were reading. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities. Read that one more time. Therefore I take pleasure. He says, therefore I am grateful for infirmities or for weaknesses. Go ahead, brother. And in infirmities and in reproaches in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Paul learned something amazing. He said, wait a second, I know my weakness. He named several of them. He said, but one thing I am grateful. He said, because I know that I am strong. And those times, not through me, but through God. It's not by night. It's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of God. Paul knew what it was like to get in a place where he shut himself in. 
He said he thanked God for that experience of speaking in other tongues. We need, we need to allow the Spirit of God to move in us. And allow the Holy Ghost to touch us in the middle of our weakness. It prevents us from being arrogant. Sometimes it makes us, it causes us to value others. You see, someone look up Ecclesiastes 4, verse 12. Ecclesiastes 4, 12. When we are in the middle of our weakness, we can be grateful because we can realize that we have a body of believers, that we can come together and we can pray. Someone have that? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and the threefold cord is not to be broken. We understand the value of others. The Word of God says that a threefold cord is not quickly broken. As we realize our weakness and we come together and we're able to pray together, knowing that there is value in that prayer together. God wants us to have ministry in our life. And sometimes it's in those weaknesses and in those flaws that the greatest ministry comes forth. I love what 2 Corinthians 1 4 says, where Paul says that God is the God of all comfort, who comforted us in our tribulations, that we therefore may be able to comfort others. You see, it's those moments of being comforted of God that we are now able to minister to others. You know, it's easy for me to minister to others because I felt the agony of what death can do in losing someone close. It made me weak. It made me vulnerable. I can empathize and I can minister to others in different areas because I've been there. I'm aware of that weakness in my life and what God has done. Being grateful for that, that weakness allows you to have the ability to minister to others. You see that I want to close by looking at a few individuals that God took their weakness and God used them. How would you describe Moses? And I know everyone's going to say, oh, he's a man that stuttered. And, and, and God did take that weakness and God used him. But what would you say about Moses you know, when he starts out as a ministry at 40 years old, how does he think he's going to handle these Egyptians? What does he do? Do you remember what he does? He wants his brother. But what, do you remember what he did? He, he does something terrible. He sends him to the backside of the desert. He, he commits murder. Like, sometimes I don't explain myself well enough before I actually ask the question. He commits murder. What do you think would make him to the place where he would do that? I think he's probably angry at that table. How about, um, how about when he's in the wilderness and all of a sudden his rock, he hits the rock? Yeah. How about when he drops the tablets of stone? I think Moses has a weak area. Yeah, he does. Wow, you mean this man who was so mighty and leading the children of Israel out of Egypt? This man who led them to the promised land? This man who, who was a leader of, of millions? Yes. Yes. But the Bible refers to him as being something. It refers to him in the New Testament as being meek. You know what that means? Meekness means this. It means anger under control. Well, wait a second, but most... 
Yes, because you know what? Because God allowed, or Moses allowed his weakness to be given to God, and God transformed him, and God changed him. Amen. When we allow God to have our weakness, when he puts his strength in the middle of it, it changes the whole story. How about David? Do you remember David? What's one of the things that you remember about David that just makes you cringe and think, ah! He had a lust problem. What did it force him to do? It, he did. And what did he do? He killed someone. So, yes, you, you, you both hit the nail on the head of the two answers that I've wanted. The Bible says that, that he had a lust problem. He lusted after Bathsheba until he went to be with her. And then all of a sudden, this little innocent thing became something very big. And it wasn't innocent. It was very bad. It was wrong. It becomes very big. And so,